Looking at the, the next slide. Now, colleagues, what we had in mind with, with, my, with my colleague here, Tanisha, was that we, we wanted to inform policies in terms of thinking around uh, HODs in schools. Because currently, if you look at PEM, I don't know if you guys know about PEM, mm -hmm. the yes. personnel, uh, what, is, what is it called? Personnel Administrative <laughs> Measures. Okay. It talks about the 85, 15% split, isn't it? Mm -hmm. In terms of the work that HODs do in schools. Mm -hmm. Time spent as a manager and time spent in the classroom as an educator. Mm -hmm. So our thinking is that we would want the thinking to, to be different around those kinds of issues. To say, if you have if you have an HOD as a manager, probably perhaps there has got to be a shift towards more time or waiting more towards management than teaching in the classroom, isn't it? And therefore, if we look at the slide, previous slide, where Tanisha spoke about, um, I'll take the day, where we look at some of the literature, around the literature, HOD is increasingly being described as middle managers. Now, for us to actually start using that kind of language and say, what is it though that a middle manager does? Okay? Therefore, we need to be thinking differently about the waiting in terms of the time that a middle, a middle manager spends in the classroom and the time that a middle, a middle manager actually spends as a manager. Okay? So now the 85, 15% split would not be working in relation to what we're getting in the literature. Okay? So the shift, in fact, has got to be, has got to be around those areas. The diagram that we have here actually shows you the kind of thinking that you may actually find or you would find in, in industry. That when you're talking about the principal and deputies, these guys are actually at the strategic level of management within a school. Okay? And middle management, HODs, it's more of a technical level than operational. Whereas at this point, HODs perform or serve more of the operational kind of, you know, to make sure that uh, educators in the, in, the, in the department actually submit their work, they give marks, they do all those kinds of things. It's just more of operational stuff. But if the thinking were to shift, we have to start thinking about the HOD as a middle manager in the true sense of perhaps giving attention to technical responsibilities. You know, what sort of, what sort of direction do we give to the department as against perhaps the operational stuff that says I need to make sure that people actually submit their work. I don't know if guys if this makes sense in terms of the kind of direction that we want to propose for thinking about uh, middle management in schools. Some of the pointers there that uh, middle managers actually occupy a more of a pivotal role between the strategic interest, that's the level of the principal and deputies, and the operational interest. So, so they can actually be serving both the technical and the operational. Okay? So, so the shift then is more away from operational interest towards the technical, technical interest. But here's another point that we want to raise here about, about the appointment of HODs, which I think, in fact, uh, the MEC for Education alluded to around issues of competency, of skills, of talent, of qualifications, in that currently that is not what is happening. And that in itself creates you know, a different set of problems for HODs in schools, in that uh, you would find that people don't even know what it means to be a middle manager in a school as an HOD. All right, so by then there are different kinds of issues around the development of, of HODs in schools. Conceptualization thereof uh, of the influence of HODs on, on school effects. <coughs> Author in his work, now that should not have been 22, no, we're not there yet, right? Eh? So that should have been 2005 in his conceptualization of possible scenarios of the influence of HODs in schools, is that when you look at schools that are partially effective, either you're going to find that the school has weak educators and strong HOD teams, or, or the other way around. Okay, that schools that are totally or highly ineffective, you've got a strong educator and strong HOD team. Now, the importance for us, perhaps, of talking about that, in fact, there is another level there, that or that's the first one, totally ineffective schools that have got weak educators and weak HODs. So the more we inform the web of, of HODs and we develop them and we empower them, I hate to we empower them. But we take HODs through a capacity building kind of program so that they are aware of, of their own strengths, limitations, weaknesses. 
So they are away, in fact, where they sit on that kind of, of, of a diagram. Whether when a person is involved in certain responsibilities and roles, that they can actually know that, in fact, this in fact is a technical role or is an operational role. So, but then that comes with a whole lot of uh, development issues. Okay? Middle management in South Africa, taking again more from Porter's work, that these, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's what we, that's a report that we found, in fact, with my, with my colleague, as we were searching for what's there uh, in terms of literature around the issue of this, what has been done, is there any research around it, and that's, uh, that's a report that we found of 2009 by Ali and Bosa, and they raised those issues in the report, okay, that the role of, of HODs is actually changing in the schools. They're taking more on supervisory role, coaching and mentoring, but they need support themselves to be able to execute those kinds of responsibilities. And they raise an issue around whether we should perceive the HOD as a manager or a leader in a school, because that's got implications for how we actually train and develop HODs in schools. If we're training leaders, we we'll design a different program than if we're training a manager. Okay. But that's an issue that they raised in the, in the report. Uh, moving on, we've mentioned those new, new and additional responsibilities that HODs have, which HOD would then require that we rethink policy issues around uh, you know, the work of HODs. We came across this framework by WISE, okay, who suggested that. You know, when we start rethinking the work of HODs, that we think along these lines of administrative, academic tasks, managerial, educational tasks, and that these tasks <coughs> actually fall on these continuums, okay, the vertical and the horizontal one, okay, that uh, the administrative and academic tasks are, are actually task related. Okay, or those roles are task related. Okay, that uh, when when you're looking at the nature of the doing that, departmental keeping of departmental records are administrative. Okay, academic aspect of that that the HOD would know the subject area or subject areas in the department could be economics, uh, accounting, business studies. If if you're talking about someone in that kind of department, and that those roles would be managerial as well. But these roads, they at the bottom focus on, on, on people. You know, how do you lead a team? So when you've got six or eight, tell me, when you've got six or eight people in the department, how do you manage them in relation to records that they've got to submit, in relation to perhaps assisting those people in the department with, with their knowledge areas? And some, and, and another task, or other tasks are actually educationally related. Okay, and, but they focus on people as well. When you work with learners in the department, when you work with parents in the department, okay. So, so, so we thought that this framework would be would be useful to look at um, in relation to what we are proposing about a shift um, in policy on the 85, 15 percent weighting. So then it would mean that the 15 percent weighting would need to increase, and that the issue actually spends less time in the classroom and spends more time on all of these roles. Um, from this conceptual framework, okay? That's what we, that's what we're proposing. So it's, it's that, that we need to focus more on professional development of HODs, that we need to be thinking about policy reforms around uh, the work of, or the roles and responsibilities of HODs. The last slide, this is just what we're proposing, informed by that conceptual framework that we saw, that when we're thinking about the 85 and the 15% split, that when we, when we increase the time the HOT spends as a manager, that perhaps that time would then be uh, divided along those percentages, or perhaps we would actually be looking at those kinds of, of weightings. Okay? But yeah, Felix, our research is very much um, in its <coughs> infantry stage. There's a lot of thinking that we still need to put into that. And, uh, and we start reconceptualizing the work of HOTs. Because that's what our project is about, focusing on HOTs and how we can actually assist HOTs with their work, but also inform policies around, around that.